Vancouver, the Empire Games reach their climax. The Duke of Edinburgh inspects a service guard of honour and sees Ken Wilmshurst win the long jump for England. The Duke was accompanied by Lord Alexander, who had opened the Games. Victory for England, too, in the weight. A new record by John Savage, 55 feet and a quarter of an inch. So, to the final day, the Duke chats to competitors, the informal prelude to a day of triumph and tragedy. In baking heat, the courageous marathon field circles the stadium, the start of a gruelling journey of over 26 miles. Among them are Jim Peters and Stan Cox, the two English hopes. Then comes the long-awaited highlight of the Games, the mile of the century between great runners who've beaten the clock. The supreme test as they battle for mastery on the track. A field of eight, Bill Bailey of New Zealand takes the lead. Dark-haired John Landy of Australia lying fourth, Bannister close behind. End of the first lap, Landy goes out in front, setting a killing pace to try and blunt the famed Bannister finishing burst. Bannister is now second. The second lap. Then the third, still no change. Landy, the pacemaker, running at terrific speed. Already it's a two-man race. Landy, the world record holder, but Bannister, the first four-minute miler, is gradually closing the gap. Final lap. Despite Landy's early terrific pace, Bannister is still there, a relentless pursuer right at his shoulder. 300 yards to go. Still no finishing kick from Bannister. As the Landy plan succeeded, then comes the answer. Watch Landy look back over his left shoulder as Bannister passes him on the right. Roger Bannister, the master miler, wins by three yards in three minutes, 58.8 seconds, just outside the world record. Landy, too, cracks the four-minute mile. Now can be seen the great physical demands of a four-minute mile on even a supremely fit athlete. Desperately tired, Bannister congratulates his great rival, who, strangely enough, looks the fresher of the two master milers. And Vancouver salutes another English victory. Then, high and tragic drama with the end of the marathon. First man to enter the stadium is Jim Peters, 15 minutes and over a mile ahead of the field. A pitiful, exhausted figure who had driven himself beyond the limit of human endurance to win for England. Officials look on, none daring to help, and so risk the disqualification of a great-hearted runner. Finally, the misunderstanding over the finishing line, and Jim Peters staggers into the arms of Team Masseur Mick Mays, beaten for strength, but not for courage. Meanwhile, up to the finish comes the dogged little Scot, Joseph McGee, to bring the title back to Britain for the time of 2 hours, 39 minutes, 36 seconds. A splendid achievement, but no one will ever forget Jim Peters, a very gallant gentleman of sport.